evening, everyone. And uh, thank you all so much for joining us on another exciting webinar. As Eddie alluded to, um, this uh, this topic for today, actually, like Eddie said, it's uh, it's our, believe it or not, it's our 22nd webinar ever since we kicked this off back in, um, um, I believe it was March when we started with this uh, with a webinar series. So it is truly, it's been an exciting journey and we are, you know, even more excited for what's to come. So, uh, but with that being said, uh, you know, we just so you'll know, we're doing this um, in, in appreciation to, to, to your loyalty to the credit union. And we truly appreciate your, uh, your, your, your membership, your business here with us. And uh, we, you know, um, as many people uh, will say it in a credit union, um, you know, we're here to, uh, to, to serve you all, serve you and give back in any way we can. So, and that's the reason why we're selecting so many exciting different topics. And as I mentioned in the last one, you know, we're always open to, uh, to any feedback. So anything, if there's any particular subject you all want to know about, please uh, don't hesitate to let us know. We'll be excited, more than happy uh, to put something together and then, you know, and prepare those, um, those different uh, topics uh, and, and then come in and present to you all. Uh, with that being said, uh, let me go ahead and get it started and introduce our normal Wednesday crew. Uh, last week we were missing one of our our very old, but now we have the, the whole team back, and uh, I'm excited to introduce you all again. Um, without without any particular order, but we do have Carrie Lazar from a marketing department. Thank you, Carrie, for joining us. She is the reason why uh, you know we are making this happen. Everything that you see here, all the graphics and everything, this is. It's 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 pretty much all the hard work of uh, of Carrie. So thank you so much, Carrie. Um, we also have Eddie from from marketing as well. Uh, he is um, he is pretty much he's gonna be uh, as always. He's gonna be in charge of our Q and A. Uh, also keeping track of that chat. So if you, if anyone has any questions, uh, please feel free to send uh, you know send send your questions over whether it is via the chat uh, feature or through the Q and A. And Eddie is going to be keeping track of those. And um, as always, our, it's our commitment to always answer every question, no matter how late we get. Um, but uh, just rest assured that we're going to answer every question that we get through the chat or the Q&A. Um, and, um, and as you guys know, uh, I think you're, you're already you're familiar with myself now. Although I'm the youngest one here of, of, the, uh, of the crew, you know, the one that's been the least amount of time by the credit union, but, uh, uh, but you know, my name is Milton and I'm the membership development officer and I'm really excited. Um, and I'm going to be here uh, to support my colleague who's actually going to be doing the, uh, uh, the whole uh, presentation this evening. And that is none other than our very own Ken Freely, our membership development analyst. Um, and um, again, the topic, it's uh, the psychology of spending. So it's an exciting one. I'm actually really, really looking forward to it. And without further ado, uh, Kim, take it over for me. Thank you so much, Milton. And we just want to extend a warm welcome to every person that has chosen to spend a little bit of their evening with us. It truly is always an honor to spend this time on Wednesdays. It's actually the, the, uh, the time of the week that I cherish the most. I always look forward to the Wednesday night webinars when we can um, get together and learn more about finances, about credit union products and services. Um, just so excited about tonight, the psychology of spending, a very interesting topic. So um, I don't want to take up a whole lot of your time. I always, always want to say thank you for your membership. We always say no members, no credit union. And if you could spread the word to your family, your friends, your colleagues, your neighbor about our financial institution, it would be an honor to help them with any of their uh, financial dreams. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my camera off so that you can pay attention to the slideshow. And let's just go ahead and get started. So I do want to ask you, this uh, webinar is going to be a little bit different. It's a little more interactive. So if everybody on the call would get a pen and paper. If you don't already have it, you're really going to want to take notes so that after the webinar, when you go to spend or save, you can actually go back to what you learned and the psychology of your own spending habits. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So spending habits, boy, that's a that's a great topic. Um, I know I learned so much when when we were actually going through um, this webinar, and um, it's really cool to learn what makes us spend the way that we do. 
Um, you know, and what do you think some of the influences are to your spending? Well, tonight we're going to figure that out. Um, we are actually going to uh, learn what spending habits are, what influences them. We are going to uh, look at um, values. We're going to look at advertising, social factors, and social concept, and how all these factors interact to shape our spending habits. And they truly do. You're going to find out at the end. So with the first thing we're going to go over is values versus attitudes. So to understand really why we spend, we must start with understanding our values and attitudes towards money. Um, it's really that simple. Um, you know, what is the difference? Is there a difference between values versus attitudes? Absolutely. Um, even though the two words are often interchangeable, they're actually rather distinct ideas. Values are typically strongly held beliefs um, that reflect our upbringing, believe it or not, without, you know, examining and a conscientious effort, it's really difficult to alter a personal value. Attitudes can be more easily changed. They usually reflect our current life situation, what's happening at that very moment, our likes, you know, our dislikes, um, you know, as such that they are not as deeply embedded as our, out, as our values are. Um, but the two do work together and can influence each other, um, that they are not the same. And it's important that you know that. So let me um, we're going to do a, a simple example of the difference. So meet Robert. Um, Robert's got on a nice suit. He's got a nice watch on. He's very, uh, he's ready to start the day. Um, he has really hard um, work ethics. He values hard work and commitment. But on a Monday morning at 6 a.m., his attitude towards work may be a little less than positive, um, creating in him kind of a negative emotional reaction to his alarm clock going off. Who can relate to that? I know I can. So his value of, you know, hard work and commitment, that hasn't changed. Just his immediate attitude towards going to work has and that attitude leads to the behavior of hitting that snooze button one too many times. And I think everybody on this call can probably relate to that little example. So let's talk about financial goals. Um, you know, it's, it's great what we just talked about, but what does it have to do attitude values towards spending? It matters because, you know, um, our values usually influence, we talked about this, our attitudes. Our attitudes create an emotional reaction. That emotional reaction can lead us to certain behaviors. For some of us, that um, those behaviors you know, can uh, detour us from achieving our fan financial goals. So how do we stop the counterproductive behaviors? Well, we have to go back to the beginning. Believe it or not, we have to go right back to the beginning. Where did our spending values come from? And to understand where our values about money and spending come from, the only way to alter your attitude towards money and thus your behavior is to understand the values that lead to those attitudes. So our money values are influenced by several different factors. Um, I'm sure we can all relate to these. What affects our money values? We are going to start with the family. Believe it or not, the family in which a person is raised usually has the greatest influence on an individual's values about money. This is not everybody, but but most, most um uh, habits do come from the influences on our childhood. Um, research finds that we are a lot more likely um, to think like our parents, um, at least as far as our spending habits are concerned. Um, our tendency to spend money or to save money, the way we manage money, even the brands we choose to spend our money on. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. Um, you know, are all highly in influenced by 
what our parents did while we were growing up. So what about media? Does media influence? Um, you know, American movies and, and television shows are filled with, you know, what we think are images of really the good life. The lifestyle depicted is often very, very far from the reality that most of us experience in our day-to-day -day lives. And yet these projected images deeply influence the way we see our personal level of, of success and what we value. It really, truly does. And what about culture? An individual's values are also influenced by cultural values. America is a culture of spending, point blank. America is a culture of spending. Since the explosion of easily accessible credit that began, I don't know, around the 1980s, our cultural tendency has been a buy now, pay later mentality. We value material goods and culturally speaking, tend to judge others not on their character, but rather on what they own. So, so true. So next we're gonna do a little bit of exercise. I asked you guys to get a pen and paper. Um, you're definitely gonna want to go through this activity and just remember that this webinar is being recorded. You will have it after the actual live webinar that you can go back and go through it and, and try to, um, you know, really write down what your values are so that you can um, look at what your spending habits are and really hone in on what your goals are for spending. So um, the first thing we're going to do is um, go through five different steps. Um, step one, and what you're going to do um, you're going to want to jot down some ideas as we go along. We're going to follow the next six steps to learn, like I said, about our value. So let's start with step number one. So identify a time in your life when you felt happiest. Identify a time in your life when you felt happiest. What were you doing? Who were you with? Um, were you with anybody? What in particular made this time happy? You're going to want to ask yourself those questions when you identify a time in your life when you felt the happiest. Step two, identify a time in your life when you made a difficult decision, but you knew with all certainty that it was the right decision. What made the decision difficult to make? That's one question you're going to ask yourself. Did you feel relief once the decision was made? How'd you know it was the right decision? Those are all questions you want to ask yourself when you identify a time in your life when you made a difficult decision, but you knew with all certainty that it was the right decision. All right. Identify a time in your life when you felt the most successful. This is step number three. Identify a time in your life when you felt most successful. And I promise you guys, this is all going to come together. Um, what about that achievement made it successful? What was it about that success? Did other people know about that success or was it completely a personal achievement? Because it can be either or. What particularly made you feel successful? You're going to want to ask yourself those three questions when you identify a time in your life when you felt most successful. Step number four, identify a time in your life when you felt peaceful and satisfied. Peaceful and satisfied. What was going on at the time? Um, were there others with you? If so, who were they? Um, what in particular made this time peaceful and satisfying? So you're going to ask yourself those three questions when you identify a time in your life when you felt peaceful and satisfied. Step number five, identify. Oh, sorry. Using an experience, using your experiences of happiness, certainty, success, and satisfaction. So those three things we just went through. Try to describe in just a few words why each experience was truly important and memorable. 
So what this exercise does is it actually leads us to our few core values. And to give you some words used to describe core values, you can or you can refer um, back to these as you write those down and you start to spend or save. Um, most people I'm going to say will have between three and seven core values, but if you find that you have more than seven, um, you're going to want to try to group some of those together. Um, choose the one that best represents that group of values. So let me give you an example. So if you felt, let's say, more successful after organizing a million dollar fund, um, raising drive for your favorite charity. Um, you may use the, the value word philanthropy, you may use community, you may use generosity to just describe why that event was meaningful to you. Um, but you could condense these three words into service for others. Um, that would have been the true value of that event. So uh, once you've defined your core values, think about the ways in which you choose to spend money. Are you spending, are you spending choices in line with your core values? So your spending choices need to be in line with your core values. If not, what changes can you make to better align your spending and values? And we're gonna talk about that. So we actually just talked about this. Once you've defined those core values, write them down. Think about the ways in which you choose to spend money. We're actually going to conscientiously think about these things as we spend or save. We always like to include a um, quote in our webinars. We thought this one uh, was an excellent quote by Gandhi. Your beliefs become your thoughts. Your thoughts become your words. Your words become your actions. Your actions become your habits. Your habits become your values and your values become your destiny. So the question is, are you currently spending, are your current spending decisions in line with your defined values? If not, we just wanna think about how we can make a change, a conscientious change to our spending. If your spending and your values do, if your spending and values do not reflect your values, you have to make a change. Um, make a conscientious, conscientious decision to put your money into things that are going to represent your core values rather than allowing your spending habits to determine your values. So important. So our values shared, um, you know, share your values with your family. Spending decisions can influence everybody, every member of the family. So you want to share those values with them. Uh, remember, it all goes back to uh, when we were, who we were raised by um, and what we learned as a child. Um, you know, it's really important that everyone understands one another's values and that you have identified the shared values. So now let's turn our attention, our attention on uh, other influences on our spending behaviors. So spending habit influences. Um, the effect of um, these things really can affect um, spending. Uh, we're gonna talk about TV and radio first. Um, all of these are advertisements, um, TV and radio, internet and apps, billboards, um, product placement. So um, if we're gonna go to advertising, experts actually estimate that the average, now get this, you might wanna note, make a note of this, is exposed to anywhere between 250 to, to six to 10,000 advertisements daily, six to 10, thousand advertisements daily. That is an expert's estimate. Um, this takes into account, into account not only the advertisements that we see when watching TV or listening to the radio, but also those that pop up while we are surfing the web, the internet, and while using our, you know, favorite apps on our phones, like 
social media. Glaring advertisements like billboards uh, lining the highways. Do you ever see those great big huge billboards when you're uh, traveling? Um, I know I do. Um, to subtler advertisements such as product placement in movies and TV shows. And then there's also logo um, logo recognition. So let's, um, if you could just type in the chat, um, you guys, uh, we're going to test our own brand recognition skills by seeing if we can uh, identify these logos. So you, you're going to use the, the chat feature to play along. All I'm going to show you is the actual logo. So there it is, a swoosh. What is it, just do it? Everybody knows that would be Nike. Another logo, there's the Colonel. I don't know if you've had dinner, but this one kind of makes me hungry. KFC, Kentucky Fried Chicken. Another huge lo logo that no one would have to know what it was, just they, they would know just by seeing this logo. Another influence of how we can be influenced on spending. And my love of coffee, um, we all know that this logo, what this logo represents, you don't have to see the name um, of the merchant. Uh, we all know that this is Starbucks. Um, and then we have Apple. We all know that uh, that is the Apple logo, one of the most popular logos in um in history, do you know why? I'm going to give you a little bit of trivia. Do you know why there's a um, a bite out of the apple? Does anybody anybody want to chat? And anybody know why there's a a bite out of that apple? So the apple logo was inspired by Sir Isaac Newton, and the first version of the logo actually depicted Newton sitting under a tree. And as you all know, it quickly changed to the uh, Apple logo uh, with the bite out, as we all know today. It was all done for scale. The Apple has a bite taken out of it for, for scale so that a small Apple logo still looks like an apple and not a cherry. So I thought that was a little cute little bit of trivia for the bite out of the Apple. And then this might be my absolute favorite of all times. Um, it doesn't get any better than just the click of a button to purchase something. And most of the time it can be on your doorstep within a day or two. Um, we all know that this is Amazon. Um, really quick, easy ways to uh, spend. And, you know, you have to ask yourself these questions, you know, uh, and, and make sure that those purchases align with your spending values. And here's another one. Um, we all know that this is Chili's the restaurant and then we have the the big the big arch the big yellow arch mcdonald's just a little bit of trivia mcdonald's started i think they opened their first restaurant in 1940 1940 and then we have the twitter we have the bird um and then of course we have uh another very very popular merchant target so, you know, I think you'd agree that all, all of us could name these logos with no hesitation. Um, unless you live in a cave uh, or cutting off all communication from the outside world, you know, um, advertising has a huge influence in how we spend. It truly does. Um, the best way to combat the influence of advertising on our spending is to understand the tactics advertisers use to get us to buy. So you're gonna see, um, you know, about spending, uh, you know, the um, advertisers are constantly um, using image, images of happy, healthy, smiling people, um, you know, using their particular product, uh, and this creates, you know, a psychological connection in our brains, um, linking personal fulfillment with that product. So take a moment to point out the specific products that are highlighted in this slide. Um, 
in the TV and movie clips. You know, you see Starbucks, you see Audi, um, Xbox, PlayStation. Advertisers will actually pay millions of dollars to have their product featured in a scene. And one example is Heineken Beer paid $45,000 to be centered in a movie screen. Does anybody know what that movie was? A little bit of trivia for you. So Heineken Beer paid $45 million to be centered in a movie screen. 007, give you a hint. It was James Bond. Um, despite James Bond's love for martinis, uh, $45 million for one scene in a movie. Um, now, Apple doesn't pay um, for product placement. Instead, they send multiple gifts. This is so smart on their part. They send multiple gifts to the production company with the hopes that they will use that product in a scene. And it seems to work because Apple was the most promoted product in 2014. So as you can see, it really truly influences how we spend. The, net, the connections, these connections are so ingrained in our psyche and our culture. We base an individual's worth, including our own, on the stuff that we have. Let's talk about spending habit influences. There are also social situations that, it can that can influence our purchasing behavior. Imagine that, social factors. What are some social circumstances that might affect our spending? Um, you're gonna ask yourself some social, what are some social uh, circumstances that may affect your spending? Um, you know, you can use the uh, chat feature again to what are some of the, some of the things, some of your ideas, of what social circumstances that might affect our spending. Um, I immediately think of family, friends, um, na even neighbors, uh, society, social class, um, the type of job that we have. Um, all of those, and I'm sure you have a lot of other great ideas as well as to what um, are some social circumstances that might affect your spending as well. Um, we're more likely actually to purchase items from people we know. I'm gonna give you another example. Um, you're, we are more likely to purchase something at a friend's party than from someone you don't know. I mean, it's it's just the way it is. You know, you think of Tupperware, you think of Pampered Chef, you think of Avon, you think of Mary Kay um, and many, many others. Um, our social class has an influence on our spending attitudes as well. Have you ever experienced a time when you received a significant increase in income only to find that it increased your spending habits? Absolutely. Um, this may be because of your change in social class. A social class uh, is actually a group of people, I'm going to give you the definition, who have the same social, economic, or educational status in society. When you have more funds av available, you may be giving yourself permission to buy more or buy more expensive items. I mean, it is just the truth. Um, if you're opposed to spending more money with your next raise, consider instead raising your contribution on your retirement um, for the amount you gained or set up a direct deposit to a savings account for that same amount and just don't look at it. Pretend like it's not there. Um, that way you will know, you, um, you still know that you got a raise, but your, next, your net income or your purchasing power is the same as before. So just because you got that raise, you're not gonna spend based on your new net income. So what are some social circumstances that may affect our spending? Um, to some degree, consumers in the same social class exhibit similar purchasing behavior. The higher our socioeconomic status, often the more expensive the cars we have, the houses we have, the clothing we have, and the food that we buy. Um, 
And there's a really nice uh, house with a really nice vehicle sitting in front of it. Um, what about peer groups? You know, we often think of peer groups as teenagers. Well, that is not always the case. Um, it can happen for, it can be true for adults too. Um, have you ever found yourself, and I so related to this, have you ever found yourself going out to lunch at work, even though you brought lunch because everyone else was going or spending more than you attend, uh, intended to when you were at the mall shopping with a friend? Um, I think we all have probably done that. And, you know, what about uh, peer pressure? You know, peer pressure actually exists. Um, even for adults, we can still choose to spend, um, but we also can choose not to. I have a group of friends that we go shopping um, once a year, and there is one friend in our group. She typically comes home with nothing, and I really thought about her while I was going through this, um, preparing this webinar, um, because it reminded me of my friend Tracy. She typically never comes home with anything because she truly thinks about what is it? Why do I need it? She thinks about all the reasons and more times than not, she doesn't buy it. Um, sometimes it helps imaging yourself in the situation ahead of time. So preparing yourself, you know that once a year you're going to go with your friends and you're going to go, you know, uh, shopping probably for an entire weekend. Um, you know, if you... Also, if you are asked to go out to lunch frequently at work and, you know, you've been committed to saving your money by prepping uh, your lunch ahead of time, um, consider, you know, saying, you know, not today, I made my lunch, but thank you. Or I just ate lunch, but I'd love to come and go with you guys for company and go and don't eat, get a water. These are all things that can really help, um, you know, to bring awareness um, and can curb the pressure. That, that pressure to spend. Let's not forget about the atmosphere, you guys. Um, most of us have had the experience of being in a department store or shopping mall and finding it extremely difficult to find the exit. This is not an accident. The longer you are in the store, the greater the likelihood that you will make a purchase. Retailers, they control the lighting, they, the layout, the music, uh, the temperature, and even the smell to entice you to buy. For most people, shopping is not simply an act of purchasing what you need and then going home. Shopping is actually entertainment. It is, and social involvement. And, uh, you know, going shopping with friends, I mean, it is really an experience. So for researchers, mall, this is a really good um, little uh, tidbit. Ma malls are vast, complex, and complete. You know, studies have shown that more actually purchase Sorry, studies have shown that more actual purchases occur in the third hour of shopping. That doesn't necessarily happen with me, but they do say researchers have done studies and they say that purchases occur in the third hour of shopping. So malls are designed to keep a shopper there for at least that long with, you know, winding architecture, appealing music. Um, they even add uh, pleasing aromas, and it's not too difficult to do. We all know that time flies. So to be in a mall or or somewhere, you know, shopping store to store for three hours, eventually you're going to buy something. So spending habit influences. Another very important factor that influences our spending is our self-concept. Our self-concept. I am. You guys, these are the two, two of the most powerful words. What you put after them shapes your reality. And each of us carries a certain set of beliefs about ourselves. The set of beliefs is known as our self-concept. Generally speaking, we act in ways that are consistent with our self-concept. We'll give you another example. If a component of one's self-concept includes, um, I'm a good cook. 
that person is more likely to offer to help in preparing food for a party than someone who has a self-concept of being a really bad cook. Spending habits. Your self-image answers the question, who am I? So self-concepts may include ideas such as, I am a hard worker, I'm good at math, or I'm tall. Um, now just think for a minute about your, your own self-concept in regards to spending money. So keep in mind that when our behavior doesn't match our self-image, it leads to what? It leads to mental stress. Acting in ways that are contrary to our self-image can lead to something called cognitive dissonance. In cognitive dis in psychology, cognitive dissonance is the mental stress or anxiety caused when our brains are confronted with contradictory beliefs or values. For example, a person whose self-image includes I am good at riddles will experience cogn cognitive dis dissonance if they are confronted with a riddle that they cannot solve, while someone without that self-concept won't care at all. They just won't care. If your beliefs don't match your behavior, you will be stressed out and have anxiety. And let's not forget about the idea of the self-fulfilling prophecy. A self-fulfilling prophecy is a prediction that directly or indirectly causes itself to become true. So what does this all have to do with money? Because we go to great lengths to avoid cognitive dissonance, we will, um, we will, uh, set ways consistent with our self-concept around money. I mean, it just is what it is. So if you think of yourself as a saver, you will probably feel more psychological stress when you have to take that money out of savings um, to use for a large purchase. You know, we save that money, we put it in the bank, we probably pull up our accounts at least once a day. We see that, that balance in our savings accounts. And it just gives us peace of mind. And then the refrigerator goes out or the stove goes out or our car breaks down. And even though we saved that money for that, it's still very stressful to have to deplete what you have saved so long for. If you think of yourself as a spender, you may be more uh, likely to make impulsive purchases. You know, it's all about examining and recognizing your self-concept around money and how, uh, how it can help you avoid behavior that is counterproductive to reaching your financial goals. This is all about financial goals and what you want out of your life. A spender who makes a, a conscious effort to change their self-concept to that of a saver they're going to find it much easier to save for their goals. They just will. So changing how, how you think about yourself may actually change your behavior. When faced with the decision of whether or not to buy or not to buy, you if you think to yourself, I am the type of person who saves money, you might actually find it easier not to buy. Simply just telling yourself, I am a person who likes to save money. It can change you from being a spender. So spending habit influences. Um, once we have a greater understanding of our values and the factors that affect our attitude about money, we can then decide if we need to make a change to reach our financial goals. And most people find that they do. And it's okay. The, the, the whole point of this is to understand what your financial goals are and what it's going to take to get you there. So are you ready for a change? Um, if you have determined that, yes, you need to make a change and becoming more of a saver than a spender, then it's time to talk about a few strategies to save. We're going to give you those strategies and help you to be able to change um, those spending habits and be able to, to spend 
and to be able to save. It's really a balance. Um, paying yourself first means to designate, uh, let's say a certain amount of money um, to go to your savings uh, out of your paycheck before any of your other bills are paid. Um, so if you decided, let's say you decided to take 10% of your income, then you would create your budget, of course, based on 90% of your net home pay. So people report the most success when they have that 10% directly deposited into their savings account. It's if you don't see it, you won't miss it. So you can have it go straight from your paycheck to that account um, without you actually having your hands on it and seeing it. Another strategy that we wanted to give you is learn to love savings. You may find that watching your money grow and saving for future purchases will be so much more satisfying than spending impulsively. Remember, we talked about this. Change your self-concept from one of I love spending to I love saving can actually help you change your behavior. And I just want to throw in right now, uh, the Senate Credit Union has the best rates in the nation on uh, certificates of deposit. You can put in as little as $1,000. And we have rates that are over 5% um, for as little as two years for only $1,000. And it is so life-changing to watch that money grow. Um, it really, truly is. And if you are at the point where, you know, you have a little bit of money, even as little as $1,000, and you want to invest it and watch it grow, please call me. Um, I'm happy to talk to you about any of these strategies and help you to get to the financial goals that you are wanting to attain. Um, you know, aligning your spending with your values. It's so important. If you find that you're spending more money than you want on items like, you know, entertainment, eating out, clothes, other ones, you know, review those core values again. And if inter entertainment was not one of your top values, why would you spend a lot of money on it? Find the things that truly matter to you and demonstrate its importance with your spending decisions. This is the part I love the most um, of the presentation. Um, we are going to be aware, um, you know, that we are highly influenced. We already talked about it by advertising. Um, do we truly think before we buy? Um, you know, these are the questions. I mean, I would even highly recommend that you write them down and you take them with you to Target. Um, you take them with you to um, any store, what is it, Home Goods, where you can get anything and everything you want, um, Costco, and ask yourself, because, you know, here's the thing, impulsive buyers will just, oh my gosh, I got to have that, and they'll just throw it in their cart. They don't think about it. They don't process it. So ask yourself, will I use this? Do I need this? Where am I going to put it? What if I wait? Will I really use this product? Um, why am I here? What did I come in the store for? Um, are there underlying motives to make this purchase? Do I own anything else that could provide the same use? Um, am I motivated to buy this because this is my favorite, because I like the setting that I saw it in? So I have been known to buy I love to decorate. So I've been known to buy decorations because of how they were displayed in the store. I bring it home and I'm so disappointed because I can't make it look the same. You really, truly have to ask yourself, do I have the other things in this setting that are going to make it look like it does here in my home, which is why I want to buy it because I like the way it looks here in the store. So, you know, ask yourself, did the salesperson uh, influence my desire? to purchase the item, where am I gonna put it? Um, what is the financial cost? It's really important to look at the purchase price and can I really afford it? Um, what if I wait? What else will I have to give up to afford this? My groceries, that's probably not a good spending decision. What are the other costs of this purchase? Will it start an argument with my spouse? 
make me feel guilty? Do I need to buy other matching items? You know, how do I feel? It's important to ask yourself those important questions. You know, if you have to go shopping with your friends and leave everything in the trunk until your husband's not home, you probably should not get it. <laughs> So let's talk about financial goals, you know, um, understanding, we've already talked about all this, but it all just comes together full circle, understanding your values, your attitude, your emotional reaction can help you change your behaviors. So if you define your values, I highly recommend that you define your values. It helps you make money choices that are in line with them. Um, being aware of the things that impact your attitudes, like social status, peer pressure, advertising, can help change your behavior. And don't forget, building your savings usually release, relieves so much stress and anxiety. If you have some savings that you can rely on in the case of an emergency, that will relieve so much stress and anxiety, even before the emergency happens. Um, combining the insight with why you buy will hopefully help you make the choices that will allow you to meet your financial goals. So we actually at the credit union, we have an amazing third party that we partner with. They're called Green Path Financial Wellness. Um, I really, really hope that this webinar has given you some insight and that you took away some tips, some, um, you know, valuable information that can help you to really discern your spending and your saving savings habits. But Green Path Wellness, it is a free service to our members. Um, they can do financial assessments. Um, they're a nationwide, they're nonprofit. They provide financial education and literacy and tools for people to help them um, lead financially healthy lives. And that's the whole goal here. And it's really the goal of our credit union. We want to help you be financially fit. We want you to lead a financially healthy life because we all know it matters. Um, uh, you know, credit, they offer credit report counseling for free. They will pull your credit. They will go over your credit in detail with, with you. If you don't understand a credit report, and let me tell you, credit reports have become so in depth and there are so many, so many factors that um, make your credit score, your FICO score. Um, they go over all of that with you. They are the nicest, kindest, most empathetic people. Um, and you can uh, schedule a free phone call with them. You can um, talk to them about, you know, it is uh, confidential. Um, they will help you to get where you you need to be, you know, if you're not already in a financially healthy um, uh, lifestyle. Um, and if you are, that's where we come in. The credit union can can sit down with you. We can talk to you over the phone. I'm happy to, to have a conversation with you and go over what you have and how you want to make the most. That's the whole, that's the whole key here. Make the most of the money that you have on um, uh, in your savings account. Uh, you want to make the most out of it. You don't want to leave it in a savings that's earning 0 0.05. You don't want to leave it in a checking account where you have to keep a $2,000 balance um, earning 0.15 when you can open a two-year CD that's paying over 2%. So these are great conversations that is our department of expertise. And we would absolutely love to have those conversations with you to earn your trust. Um, you know, we can talk about, we have a mortgage department. We, uh, we actually have student lending. Um, the list goes on and on. We have the best rates on auto loans, personal loans. If you need to consolidate your debt, we are your credit union and the first place for you to start. And we will do it with the most empathy and with your best interest at heart. Um, so there's Green Path. There's the link to them. Um, I love that it says speak with a caring certified financial wellness expert because they really are caring. Um, so if you need that service, it's there for you. If you don't need that service, we are here for you. So um, I hate that this is coming to an end. It went really quick. It always does. It's one of my favorite nights of the week. 
Um, again, it has been an absolute honor to present this psychology of spending to you. We would love, love, love your feedback. Um, any questions that you have, we would love to answer them on the spot tonight. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to Eddie. And again, no members, no credit union. Thank you so much um, for uh, trusting us with, with your money. Yeah, I trust it with my own money after this presentation, to be honest with you. Um, it was such a great presentation. As usual, I'm always learning something new. Uh, not just because I work at the credit union means that I know it all. But that was such a great presentation, great graphics, carry, great content, and amazing presentation by Kim. So thank you very much. Uh, I just wanted to let you know that while you were uh, doing the slide with the trivia, with the logos, everybody was very active on the chat. Everybody was answering the right questions. Uh, they guess it was KFC and Twitter and Apple, and everybody was, you know, throwing their theories as to why the Apple is, you know, has a bite. So it's so, so nice that you explained to us why that is. And when we saw even the Nike sign, everybody was saying, just do it or it's Nike. <laughs> so, um, you know, it comes with the psychology that you were talking about, how it has been implemented in our heads so much, whether it's a direct message or an indirect message like Heineken in James Bond, you know. So, uh, Kim, thank you very much. Uh, Milton, I know you want to add some words as well. You know, thank you, Eddie. Well, and, uh, and again, thank you, Kim. Uh, that was an excellent, excellent presentation. Uh, uh, very, very, uh, very, uh, uh, I mean, it was filled with so much information. And uh, and you know what? Every time she was touching a, a particular subject, I was like, I'm guilty. Um, <laughs> of, of so many, of, of so many behaviors, you know, it's, it's, and, and, and quite frankly, you know, oftentimes it's, or, you know, uh, it's yourself uh, unconsciously doing uh, certain actions that you don't really think about it, but it's, it's part of the psychology, right? I mean, how, how we are wired, how we are raised, on how we influence, you know, by 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 or or families or peers, um, and 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 then sometimes, you know, it, it uh, if it's not uh, if it's not one where you know it teaches you to be, uh, you know, wise with your money, and it, it's rather is the opposite, you know, it can get you in trouble. But uh, no, it it was it's, it's been a, an excellent um, presentation, Kim. Thank you so much, and uh, most important, thank you to all of our members that uh, that came in and they have. Uh, participated throughout the entire presentation. We truly, truly appreciate you all. Um, and uh, and I believe I just saw a comment there from Ms. Uh, Jimenez um, about the Green Path. Uh, yes, we do have Green Path. Um, that is a service that is available to you at no cost. Uh, they can sit down with you. We have a you know have a great um, um, uh, have a um, have a conversation more a tailored one on one. And uh, they they truly have a lot lots of uh, resources, lots of tools, um, and 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 as as Kim alluded to, if they don't have an answer to what you're looking for, um, you know, obviously we want you to think of us as the default. Um, you know, give us a call, give us a, send us an email, just get a hold of us, and then we'll, we'll be happy, um, you know, to sit down with you and, and and see you know what we can do to help you achieve your your financial um, uh, uh, goals and dreams. So with also, that said, uh, uh, just overall, it's, uh, it's been a great presentation. Also, I just wanted to mention that Ms. Jacqueline on the chat was very active. So shout out to you, Ms. Jacqueline. Thank you for being present in this webinar. We appreciate you so much for your participation. You were answering all the questions, giving us tips. And then there's a tip for us, Kim and I. I know we're like impulsive shoppers, you know, Kim. You had a bad influence on me because the other day you were talking about shopping and I was thinking, thinking about shopping. And I just bought a shirt yesterday, you know, so Kim, I'm going to blame that one on you. But this is one of the tips that she's saying. A couple of years ago, I adopted a personal rule. If I want it, I must wait at least two full days to buy it. By stalling and inserting a speed bump, I have saved so much money. And she said, bonus, often prices drop or discount code emails are sent to you if you leave things in your online shopping cart for at least 48 hours. So Miss Jacqueline, next time I want another pair of shoes or a shirt, I need to ask myself if I want it or if I need it, I might wait those 
two full days in order for me to get it. Kim, I think we're going to have to practice that. <laughs> so I wasn't able to see see the chat during the webinar. And um, you all, thank you so much for being, for participating and being so engaged. I love this so much to buy or not buy. That's the question. You know, I can actually tell you that I have actually gone shopping, put things in my cart. And by the time I got to the checkout, I was like, why is this in my cart? So, you know, really asking yourself, why am I here? Do I need this? Where am I going to put it? Ask yourself those questions. I know I'm going to, because I have been known to be a, a impulsive uh, a buyer. And um, I'm going to change. I'm going to change those habits. If there but is a will, you. there is a way, you know. So, Kim, we, we, we support you 100% on your change. No, but we appreciate you for doing that presentation. And also for those, you know, there's things that you cannot avoid. There's things that, you know, definitely can be a, a, a want or a need. But there's other things that, you know, like gas, like your mortgage, like food, uh, all those things, you know, are necessary to, you know, to buy. So, of course, you know, we're not saying not to buy anything or just, you know, make sure the light on your on your, the, light, the light on your gas tank is on. And then you're like, you know what, I'm away a couple more days to save. No, no, no. If you need gas, definitely get them. And I just wanted to mention that because I believe we have a promotion going on with our credit cards and debit cards, Milton. Is that correct? Yes, sir. You got that right. It's uh, 10 times the points for every every dollar you spend. Uh, and uh, and as Kim also mentioned, you know, um, you know, right now, um, you know, just rest assured that you are um, you you have you know a lot of a uh, lot of resources through us. Uh, and, uh, and 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 then most important, you know, all, all everything that we have, all the products that we that we have. Uh, we make it with a conscious of you in mind because, again, as many of you know, you know we are a uh, 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 a not for profit business. I mean, we, in essence, we are we are non profit. Uh, we're not uh, we don't have shareholders. And as a matter of fact, you're the one that that owns the credit union once you become a member. Uh, so it's member owned, um, and so we're able to come out with and provide so many different promotions. Uh, and uh, and again, I mean, I'm probably gonna get tired of me saying this, but. Uh, uh, as Kim also alluded on the, on her presentations, right now we are actually um, have the best the best deposit rates when it comes to our 24 months and 36 months uh, CDs, uh, not just locally but in the nation. Um, that's how uh, that's how you know that's how um, strong we are right now in terms of you know how we want to make sure that we always are providing the best uh, products, the best services to all of our members, and the uh, 10, 10 times. The points for our um, our credit card or uh, or in our debit card as well too. Uh, it, it truly is uh, uh, exciting. We had this that webinar just last week, um, and uh, I think do we um, do we have Carrie uh, who we use her account as an example. Um, I think she gave us an update. Um, how many points do you now have on your on your credit card um, and combined with your debit card, uh, Carrie? 71,000. 71,000. Wow. Okay. Eat your hearts out. I know. <laughs> but I've been saving forever. <laughs> or not that long, but I'm we will excited. keep everyone, we will keep everyone posted and let you all know what uh what Carrie ends up doing with all those points. Um and so uh, I think that we might have to do a follow-up here very soon. But uh, uh once again, I uh, just want to thank you all for taking your time. We want to be mindful of everyone's time as well. Um, and with that, you know, I don't want to go without saying uh, to, um, you know, that we do have a, another great webinar next Wednesday. It's uh, money management through transition. Um, that's going to be next week. Uh, and uh, we hope to see you all again uh, next Wednesday. Um, Eddie, do we have any any other questions or comments that we want to that we want to review before we wrap the presentation? You know, no, just that everybody on the chat was very thankful and very grateful that we did this presentation because we were going over the psychology that goes behind, you know, the buying and how somebody can be an impulsive buyer or why do we buy things that perhaps we don't need or, or we know how we make our decisions based on, you know, the friends that we have, if we want to buy lunch out or, you know, drinks or whatever it is. Uh, but I just wanted to allude that everybody was grateful on the chat, but I think we want to emphasize the Kerry, Kim, Milton, myself, Eddie, and the whole United States Center for Career Union, we appreciate you for attending these webinars. Without you, it wouldn't be possible. Uh, I just wanted to highlight we're thankful for each one of you. 
If you're a member, thank you very much. That means that you are a boss, so we're on the best behavior, you know. And then if you're not a member yet, please, please make sure that you check up our website. Just type a new member bonus on the search bar, and then you'll see the promotions that we have for new membership as well. But with that being said, I don't have anything else other than that. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Kim, great presentation. Carrie, great content. Hey, this one. Milton, the side comments are always on point, brother. I just wanted to mention you can call our 202 or 800 number and choose option seven and ask for Kim Fridley. Um, if you want to discuss this, talk about strategies, I'm more than happy to uh, to talk to you. Option seven, everybody, don't forget. Option seven. That's right, thank option you. seven. Thank you. Well, that being said, uh, just want to again wrap it up uh, by saying thank you. Uh, thank you all say you, uh, Eddie, you stole my thunder there, but I uh, truly appreciate you, sir. Uh, and I appreciate everyone. Uh, thank you all so much. You all have a wonderful evening and we'll see you back again next Wednesday for another exciting webinar. Bye, everybody. Everybody. Bye.